hi this is rashis thanks so much for clicking on this video and uh, giving me a few minutes of your precious um, time and uh, i don't know if you watched my last video last video was on general latches uh, so the higher level difference between flip-flop and latches is uh, what they are sensitive to so flip-flops are sensitive to edges of the clock while latches are sensitive to the level then we talk about uh, flip-flops benefit and today i'm going to explain the construction of flip-flop so flip-flops are made up of two latches so we have this latch l1 and another latch l2 so this latch l1 is level high latch and this latch is a level low latch with with this bubble here means this latch is transparent during the high phase of the clock and during the high phase of the clock and uh, latch 2 is opaque or off and during the low phase of the clock uh, latch 1 is opaque and latch 2 is transparent okay that's important um, so let's look into this circuit so flip-flop consists of two latches and one important thing to keep in mind that D is here and the output of flip-flop is not here output is after the second latch and the middle net let's call it M and we will understand it so input comes here output of the flip-flop goes here and let's see how it is edge sensitive so we are let's say in this phase of the clock clock is one i didn't name clock here the most important signal so clock is one we are here it makes the transition to one in the middle of it d changes let's say initially d was at zero and here it changes to one we're just interested in at this instant of time what happens to m l1 is transparent so d goes to output or you can say when d is one q is one so q makes a transition and i'm assuming q was previously zero so it makes go from zero to one which is m here what about this q sorry i was previously talking about this q i should call this output something different but let's call, call it q okay um that's the outside queue okay what about this queue now this latch is like a switch off it's not gonna let this thing impact this so what happens the queue remains at its previous state and let's assume that was zero so what happens q remains as zero and again i'm this this is the uh, time um, I didn't do things after that so even though uh, D changed M changed as a result Q didn't change okay. and the, let's say this thing that we have went back like this and now it's like that this goes down like that now what happens here now we are here so output will still stay at zero because now in this phase okay this latch become open but when we came at this point m was zero because this thing went back to zero so our output stays at logic zero no change okay and what happens when let's take a look here let's do a different let's get closer to the edge now let's say oops i think it's good this zero is it was zero 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 and right just before the edge it oops goes to one and let's do this became 
as i said there is nothing goes abruptly from zero to one it's always a little tiny delay all right let's let's look into this one and these edges are important these times are important i mean to say okay should i pick a different color let's pick a different color now okay d went like that what will be m m since it was transparent latch one it went like that okay and it went because this day 11 one is transparent so m followed the input and after that oops did you notice that even though this went to zero but this is still one because now m will retain its position here as l1 is opaque now there is no way for m to follow d even though d has gone through another chain and what happens to q okay now q is this q let's make it red so right here it was zero previously so that's zero right when l2 became on or transparent q just look at what was the value of m and start with taking at the output and we know m became one so right there it became one all right so you followed me now the d chain here went back but q position change whatever the value for m was right at the edge or you can say a little bit before that we'll come to that it needs if it makes transition here q will be a little bit unclear what to take so we need to have this m to be stable right a little bit before the edge of the clock and that means now q made a change so see even though d changed before and then change again or even if i say even if i say um let's do sorry if i say q change here that means um q will change oops here right it just follows the d during the transparent but q changed only here or in other words with respect to clock it it's sensitive to what to the far edge of the clock all right so let's look back again just to make sure I've explained well because sometimes when you're explaining you don't know what you're saying okay so I'm gonna repeat myself so what happens is during the one phase uh, I mean clock one phase this second one is off because the bubble it's on during the low phase and the first one is on during the or transparent in the high phase so high phase d changes here no impact on q because this one is kind of blocking q to change to follow the change of m d changes m changes okay but only at this edge now the second one is active okay so it kind of now disconnects this one so you can you can have not you can but you actually have this thing during when the clock high you had d connected to m ideally and then this this q is is disconnected
okay so m follows d but q doesn't change in the second when clock becomes low now this one got disconnected and second one is connected now q follows m during the this phase so in this way although i was trying to explain the positive edge trigger but the the circuit i drew is an a falling edge fall edge flip-flop this whole thing and you will denote this by this with the bubble there if it was a rising edge what will we do if you want to make this edge active okay think about it what are you going to do, uh, to do with these latch placement how are the are you going to connect these two latches if you want to make a rise edge flip-flop anyway hope you have answered now for for that one you will put this like active low latch first and active high latch second that will switch this whole thing all right so i hope you have understood that how edge sensitive flip-flop works um and flip-flops can be rise edge sensitive or file or fall edge sensitive that's said. so then another topic is if you remember when we were talking about within um clu oh, sorry cpu alu we were saying we had even some multiplication um multipliers especially the shift and add and later on divisions where shift and subtract and in those one we always had right after alu so we had register one bit register now you understand this flip flop this is basically flip flop it comes to alu and output goes to certain bits of the result uh, register and this was a whole register and in that case we were saying that only if certain condition meet we will load this value onto this register so that means we need to have a way to kind of enable this we only say enable is one only then on a rise edge or fall edge of a clock it depends on what kind of flip-flop this is this data will move on to this one so that's where the enable things come so just now our flip-flop is this this is not a latch okay this has this triangle of on the clock so this is a rise edge flip-flop and we want to put an enable so when enable is one there's another signal enable coming then this lowers onto here if not we want this register to keep its previous value that's enable now there is a second thing is the reset when you want to reset you all know that when you want to reset computer when you want to reset we want this flip-flop to go back to its original zero or one depending on that in this case we are I'm making it zero so always the output state becomes zero and that is also an important feature that I want and those are typically the things in a typical flip-flop you find in standard cell they have enables and they have reset but of course these two features will come at a cost of some more hardware now think about the combination circuits that we already learned a multiplexer it's a perfect usage of multiplexer for this application so our highest priority is first we want to make sure if reset is one the flip-flop goes into zero state doesn't matter what is the enable so this is kind of a priority so we put a high priority here when reset is one i put make this again this is all a single bit this bit is grounded means zero so doesn't matter what the enable value as long clock is ticking ticking on the rise edge of the clock okay and this is also on the rise edge of the clock um, it's not a, this okay there's another example of reset reset can be synchronous or asynchronous I wasn't I forgot about that so otherwise I would have drawn that before synchronous and asynchronous this one reset is actually active or Q 
goes to zero only at rise edge of the clock when reset is equal to one here q is equal to zero whenever r is equal to one whether it's a it doesn't matter where you are in the clock it's like a super uh, control reset but this one the example i have it has a dependency because i'm not touching a clock here clock is a free running comes like this and then on if it's a rise edge only things will happen at the rise edge when one of the re rise edge it sees reset as one zero will go to d and on the rise edge of the clock d will go to output and if uh, reset is zero i mean normal operation then depending upon enable signal if enable is one we bring d on to q on the rise edge clock that's important but if enable is zero the previous value goes back into q so that's how you are building a a, a, a flow flaw with additional functionality of enable and add, and it comes at the cost of additional multiplexer and this is a single bit when we talk about this is like an 8-bit register or it's a 16-bit register or 32-bit register what you are really saying is you have and this is typically I would I would say this is 8 bit what what really means is you have data that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 bits and each one has one bit of flow flow that really means it. I mean you can really um, consider a, uh, create a bigger banks um, with much more tightened um, design when you have one big cell it's like a vector flop like an eight bit vector you're implementing but typically what happens each bit is separate and based on your rtl your synthesis um, um gate level synthesis tool is going to generate different full flops all right i think that's enough for uh, for now i really really hope that you have understood this if you're not following any point please watch the video one more time or two more times or three more times and if you are still not clear or i made a mistake then please um send me an email on uh, uh at rashid at co co chip design.com or um, put it in comments or you can text me on linkedin all right take care thanks bye